make a pit stop for all things NASCAR with the Four Tire Change Podcast. Here is your host, Dawson Iserlow. All right, welcome back in another edition of Four Tire Change here on ESPN Southwest Louisiana. Dawson Iserlow back with you. I want to appreciate all the support we've been getting recently, but um, yeah, this one's going to be a pretty short episode because not a ton to talk about. Dover Motor Speedway was the race. Denny Hamlin is victorious, his third win of the season already. Uh, we know Danny's searching for that every elusive title this year, and he's off to a great start. We'll get to that in a minute. But, you know, look, the racing was fine, and, you know, I, I don't have a ton to take away from it. I know the big topic this week is arrow blocking because, essentially, Kyle Larson ran Denny Hamlin down in the final stage of this race, had a chance to get past him, and couldn't get by him. And the reason he couldn't get by him, largely in part due to the fact that Denny Hamlin was blocking his air, and that's been something that's happened you know, look, over the past few years, I think even before the next-gen car came into play, it was still somewhat of a factor with some of the different packages they've been running. And, you know, look, I don't know all the uh, advanced physics behind it, right? But essentially, you're kind of mirror driving in a way and, and just making sure that you're taking away some of the lanes that the driver behind you can get into. And, and basically, they can't get you loose the way they are. One thing that I saw that was really interesting, Jimmy Johnson, of course, ran in this race. He's running a part-time schedule there with Legacy Motor Club, which he's, of course, a big part of. And he talked afterwards. There was a little clip of him basically saying, like, you know, he tried to early on get past the 99 and get up behind him. And he said, essentially, you know, in, in his day and age of the way the cars were, he would have had enough to kind of get him loose, get him out of his groove, and he'd have went up by on the inside, right? And he just couldn't get to him. He said he got up close to him, didn't touch him, but got up close where he knows that would have affected him, gotten him loose and nothing happened. It just didn't affect the 99. He was fine, right? And that's kind of the difference now, and, and, and I've heard different comments from drivers talking about the way that these new cars, you know, you have to be protecting more than you can kind of be trying to make passes. And I don't know if that's a great thing. Look, I, I, I don't know if it's the biggest deal in the world. I think we've had far bigger problems in the past with some of the racing, right? And so I thought the Dover race was, uh, you know, the early stages had a lot of action. I thought later on, for whatever reason, and maybe that's just because eventually we kind of got the faster cars to the front, right? And 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 that was something as well. Tire wear wasn't a major factor. I, I know that that feels to me like something that can be improved to make the racing better at some of these tracks. Um, but for whatever reason right now, other than that Bristol race, again, that we, we had a couple months ago that just was everything was falling apart tire-wise, we haven't had a ton of that. So I, I don't know if that's going to change. And look, some of that's up to Goodyear. Some of that's just um, you know, not super predictable. I, I do understand it's not just easy to just change this one thing and have every result go the way you want it to. Sometimes you set off a chain of reactions, right? And you change a tire compound. Well, maybe that does more than just have tire wear. Maybe that impacts a whole other list of different things, you know? So either way, um, Danny gets the win. And let's start talking about what this means for Danny Hamlin, right? Um, obviously, he is one of the drivers that we knew was going to contend for the title. And we know the story. He doesn't have a championship in his career, but boy, has he been close. He's now got three wins already. And we're not quite to the halfway point in the season yet. And he's got 17 playoff points. Leads the way in playoff points. William Byron has 15. He's second um, as far as those banked points. And remember, this isn't playoff standings. This is banked playoff points, the ones that you can carry with you once the regular season ends. Now, we know the biggest way to pay out playoff points is to win the regular season title because you get those 15. And as of now, Kyle Larson holds the top spot in the standings, even despite a second-place finish to Denny uh, on Sunday. But the big thing for Denny is that he has those playoff points banked. And again, that allows you some room for error in the early rounds of the playoffs, which is so massive. And look, he's been there before. He's gone into the playoffs with a ton of playoff points, over 30 of them banked up. Uh, and it hasn't necessarily meant he gets the championship, but it could certainly help them out. And they've been really consistently fast this year. So I, I thought it's another big one. You know, he's in the spot that William Byron's in, that Kyle Larson's in, where, you know, you kind of just going for wins at this point, right? There's no point. I shouldn't say there's no point running good points finishes because, again, the end of the year points playoffs are going to help you out. But if he's up there, he's got a shot to just kind of, you know, be more aggressive than some of the other guys who are still looking to find their way in on points and, and don't have that win to play around with. Um, but a big win for him. You know, as I continue to look down the playoff standings, continue to be impressed with Chase Briscoe. Hey, by the way, I did pick Denny Hamlin last week. So, uh, look, I'm wrong most of the time, but when I'm right, might as well point it out. So, good for me. I think it's the second one I've gotten correct this year. So, that's nice. But, um, you know, we had Chris on as well last week, and we talked a, a little bit about the way these standings are shaping up. You've got a lot of guys up there in the playoffs that we thought would be there. 
A um, couple that aren't, you know, that, that, that maybe we think have a chance. Keselowski's right on the borderline. He's working his way back in. Joey Logano has overcome that early deficit, and now he's looking like he's in a much better position. But, um, you know, not a whole lot of guys we weren't expecting to be in up there in the mix, really, um, outside of maybe Briscoe. So interesting to see. I, I, I don't love that. I wish there was a little bit more parity the way we had the first couple years of the next-gen car. It really, obviously, look, this is another Gibbs win, and we've talked about Gibbs and Hendrick. I mean, it's just been dominant. Every non-super speedway or non-drafting track they've won this year. I'm not a huge fan of that, to be completely honest with you. Um, and even early, we saw, you know, Trackhouse looked like Ross Chastain was back to being pretty fast. He's been okay, but he's down to 10th in points. Hasn't been a great stretch for him. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be more of the same moving forward. I would expect it to be. You know, you think, look, at some point, Penske's going to win a race here at, at an intermediate track, but... For now, it, it continues to be the Hendrick and the Gibbs show, and that was on display yet again, and we'll see if that continues to be the case. And it leads us into our next race, which is Kansas. And, you know, Kansas has had some really interesting races over, over the last few years. I think it's been one of those kind of revitalized intermediates with the next-gen package helping out in a, in a big way as well. And, uh, you know, look, I'm excited to see what happens here. This is going to be the first kind of traditional intermediate in a while, um, you, you, I guess you need to count Texas in that, but, you know, and Texas was good this year. We've had our mixed feelings on Texas, but um, going into this one, look, I why would I pick anyone other than Hendrick or Gibbs right now? There's really no reason to, right? So I expect those cars to be up front early and often, um, and to be honest with you, I expect another one of those cars to win this weekend, and I'm going to go back to the other side of things, go back to Hendrick for this one. And, you know, I, I've thought about this, too, with, with the way that Bowman's been running. I thought maybe pick Bowman here, maybe get him a shot. But I think William Byron's actually kind of had a stretch here where he hasn't won in a few weeks, and he was so good early on in the year. I mean, will he be um, back at Kansas? And, and I think the kind of the battle at the top between Hendrick and Gibbs continues, and the battle to catch up for everyone else continues as well, right? Um, you know, guys who really could use good runs here, again, Briscoe, those guys that are in the middle to the bottom portion of but being in the playoffs right now, talking about Briscoe, you're talking about Ty Gibbs, you're talking about Ross Chastain. Um, big week for those guys to try and show some speed here in what is kind of the most normal stretch of races. I, I said that earlier, you got Darlington next week, and then you know, you'll have the All-Star race, but then you'll have Charlotte as well. Like If you've got speed at the intermediates, you can make up some ground the next month or so on the Cup Series circuit. So that's what I'm looking for. Should be another uh, exciting race. Hopefully it is. I um, want to remind everybody, continue to like, subscribe, leave a comment as well. What did you think of the race last week, and what do you think of Kansas coming up. Make your picks down below. I'm going with William Byron. We'll see if I can get two in a row right. Haven't done that yet this year. We'll see if this is the week. But until next week, it has been another episode of Four Tire Change. Uh, keep following along with us. We're having a lot of fun doing it here on ESPN Southwest Louisiana.